There is an illegal immigration crisis on our southern border. That's the kind of statement that would have been once unheard of in Canada. Yet it is the exact situation this country finds ourselves in since Justin Trudeau welcomed the world with his tweet in reaction to President Trump's temporary travel ban back in January. Migrants from Somalia, Eritrea and now Haiti are crossing into Ontario, Quebec and even BC and Manitoba from the United States. While these migrants have faced adversity in their own countries through war and natural disasters, they made it to the U.S. And just like everyone else who puts in a refugee claim in the United States, they are safe while their claim is being processed. That's why Canada has an agreement with the United States known as the Safe Third Country Agreement. It's pretty simple. If you are already in a safe third country like the U.S. and making a refugee claim, you cannot simply get up, cross into Canada and start another new refugee claim. Unless, of course, you cross at a non-designated border station. You see, that's the loophole that's currently being exploited by these migrants. And it's currently not being addressed by Justin Trudeau or his globalist open border liberal cabinet. So in the first seven months of 2017, Canadian Border Services and Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada have processed 27,440 asylum seekers. Now to be clear, there are undoubtedly some legitimate asylum seekers fleeing true persecution in that group. But being afraid of Donald Trump and the US government actually enforcing their laws or rejecting your application for refugee status is not an illegitimate reason to come to Canada. I'm sorry, it's just not. The problem though does not stop once these people cross our arrested process then released, of course. News came out today that with the backlog of the aforementioned 27,000 plus asylum seekers that entered this year alone, and of course Justin Trudeau's Syrian refugee promise from the election, Canada now has a backlog and a processing time of 16 months, not the typical 60 days. And with sanctuary city policies in our major cities like Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver, we have a huge problem on our hands. Sanctuary cities are a bit hard to define because they aren't actually legal. And well, that's the best way to define it. Cities that welcome in undocumented immigrants without questions asked. But to give you a better sense, let me read from how our friend Candace Malcolm put it in her Toronto Sun column back in August. Quote, U.S. sanctuary city policies allow local politicians to deliberately undermine immigration law by refusing to cooperate with federal agencies, while also delivering government services, regardless of a person's immigration status." Unquote. In Canada, it is a bit different. We don't really have an equivalent to ICE. And remember, Canada grants benefits to even refugee claimants. So once they have their health care and their welfare and are in a sanctuary city, why would they ever jeopardize losing all that by showing up to an asylum hearing they may lose? Especially after 16 months of benefits and living in a sanctuary city while they wait. With little risk of deportation from our federal government, they will essentially have achieved amnesty by default because of these sanctuary city policies and our willingness to give them benefits. Just think about that for a minute. For the open border globalist left and their allies in the media, it's all about identity politics. And in the era of President Trump, it's actually very much all about being seen as the opposite of him. And well, Canada is guilty of that as well. In all the reporting on the spike in asylum claims and migrants entering Canada, I see two themes from the media. That open borders are good and virtuous and that all refugees are harmless. Remember, it's the same globalist left-wing media that told us that during the wave of migration hitting Europe, and when Justin Trudeau promised to accept 30,000 Syrian refugees during his election campaign, that these people couldn't possibly be harmful or possibly be terrorists. They were fleeing terrorism after all. Never mind the fact ISIS openly stated they would use this migration to infiltrate the West. But why don't we take a look at the news recently and see how that's going and well, you see that recent bucket bombing on the London subway that injured 30 people? That was perpetrated by a Syrian refugee. And well, here's a story about how even open borders Germany has had to jail a Syrian refugee after he was found guilty and have participated in a war crime when he abducted a Canadian United Nations observer in Syria back in 2013. Look, I want to be very serious about this. Illegal immigration has changed the US in many ways, none of it good. Canada in the era of Trump and Trudeau may find ourselves thrust into systemic, cultural and economic change similar to what we've seen in the US, particularly in states like California where the poverty rate has grown astronomically.
So the question for Canada is, will we wait years or decades to act as the U.S. did? Or will we act soon, secure our borders and close this loophole, all while still accepting legitimate vetted refugees from all over the world within reason? For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. You just can't trust the globalist media to talk honestly about open borders and mass migration. So make sure you click subscribe to the Rebel Media's YouTube channel where we'll bring you the other side of the story.